I'm Italian. I hate Juventus as much as the next guy, but it is as clear as day that the Bianconeri need a rebuild ASAP. No, not with Massimiliano Allegri, who is the most memed on coach in Italy, if not all of Europe. With calls coming from Saudi Arabia, he is linked with a move away. And the Aventus board are looking to appoint the legend, the Ballon d'Or winner, World Cup winner icon, Zinedine Zidane. But the strongest of them all. Zinedine Zidane. Zizzle, he was one of the greats, a former Juventus player, which just makes this appointment make so much more sense. He was last seen coaching Real Madrid in their Galactico Zero, winning Champions League after Champions League. But here in Turin, things couldn't be more chaotic as Juve's era of dominance is officially over. They haven't won the Scudetto in a couple of seasons now. It's a squad just in all sorts at the moment. They don't know which direction they're heading in and they've also been slapped with a minus 15 points penalty in Serie A last season. Business as usual, regular viewers on the channel already know we have all the brand new 23-24 season threads dropped in game. And what's the case with all these rebuilds in this FIFA 24 mod is that we get to start in the brand new season. We're in July 2023. Bear witness to this transfer list. Look how many players we're willing to let go of. Zidane actually has a job in his hand like no other. Angel Di Maria has been shipped off in his first season. The injury prone 35 year old Arjun Argentine has officially departed and the veteran club legend Juan Cuadrado they've decided not to renew his contract and he'll be released as a free agent. The Frenchman has about 79 million pounds to spend. As you can probably tell there's a lot to unpack here so let's get to it. Here we have it. Business is business. The first signing we had to make official was someone that Juve have actually bought in real life. We're trying to replicate what they're doing in this current market and Zidane is shaking hands with the American Tim Weyer. He's a son of the famous icon and now he is joining the old lady here in Italy. It didn't take much to convince Lil to sell this guy so it's got me worrying as we only had to spend 7 million pounds to make the deal official. He's a league on champion and he's a US men's national team player so we'll be converting him into a fully fledged striker. We want him playing up front being in that striker duo. It's only going to take 4 weeks so the transition should be seamless. And another player that has been linked to Juventus and has played in Italy plenty before is Timothy Castagna. This deal hasn't been actually made official, but earlier in the window they were really, really interested in the Belgian services from Leicester City now that they've been relegated. It's cleared up all the pathways for the right back who in our formation we're not really going to use, but I guess he's going to be there for some cover on the right hand side. Who are we coming through to the Allianz Arena linking up with Zinedine Zidane for £13 million. Pounds. And the star boy we've chosen to form a partnership with the American up front is the Danish wonder kid Rasmus Hoyland. I know I've completely butchered that pronunciation, but he's just had an outbreaking season at Atalanta, scoring goals for fun with the Bergamaschi and has had all of Europe on high alert. He's been linked with United, linked with Juve, obviously, and right now we're making that official. We've got his game face scan in career mode, and that has just pushed me over the edge. Zidane's given it the green light as our brand new number 11 cost us only 7.5 million pounds, some absolute bargain buys going down right now. I'm just going to take a deep breath here because the number of players we've had to offload this window is gargantuan and we're going to start off with Moise Keane who we've already used in the Everton rebuilds. I've had enough of him in FIFA 23. We've got our strike duo sorted for the next 10 seasons. So Zidane will be ushering the promising Italian out the door as he joins Lazio Bello Serie A rivals for 28.8 million. Another hot prospect striker, the Brazilian. He Juventus captured a couple seasons back, Caio George. He'll be sent out on another loan spell adventure, this time in the Premier League with Nottingham Forest for a one-year spell. We're edging towards deadline day and the summer market's wrapping up, yet we're still yet to sell a lot of the players on our transfer list and one of them who's actually just recently renewed his contract in real life, Adrian Rabio. He's no longer part of our first team plans, despite that French connection as the Spanish outfit Atletico Madrid pick him up for just over 29 million. Ooh. Ooh, 93.5 million pounds. Arsenal have come in hot. Arteta wants his man Dusan Vlahovic. Just based on real life, I think he's going to stay for at least one more season. So I'm just going to reject that for now. But he's definitely getting sold before we finish the video. 
The midfield sale and the shake-up just had to happen as we've got plenty of aging midfielders we have to ship out the door and that includes Arthur. He's just come back from his flop of a loan spell at Liverpool so Zidane's getting rid of him. He's off to Barcelona back where he came from for 18.1 million pounds. And the deadline day madness is about to ensue and the deals just keep on coming in as we've got the young Belgian De Winter. He came up from Juventus' Primavera from the youth team and Kony will be departing to Granada for a one-year loan spell. Back to back making a swift exit for two seasons is Matias Sule. We've got big plans for him. The Argentine on the right hand side. Zidane's transfer window ended up a little bit like this. We didn't even cover all the business we did as at the start we sold it. Dennis Zaccaria again to Atletico Madrid. They're taking a lot of our outcasts. The Swiss midfielder arriving back from his loan spell at Chelsea and we got 24.3 million pounds out of him. We sent Filippo Ranocchia out on a two year spell to Spain. Girona pick him up as De Chilio joins De Zerbi at Brighton for 6 million. After promotion success at Genoa, Dragusin, the young Romanian centre back, will be on a one year loan to Bournemouth. A minor sale with Felix Correa sold to Paderborn for 3.3 million. De Gracia will be off to the Greek Super League. And that about wraps it up. We've got to let the youngsters and wonder kids forge their way and make a path for themselves into the first team. I didn't want to go all out and sign superstar after superstar. We've got now squad size down to 38. We need the core of this team to be homegrown. The Italian midfield triangle of Fagioli, Locatelli and Rovella who just returned from his loan spell at Monza. Dejan Kuluzewski isn't even supposed to be here. He's off to Spurs in real life. They've made that loan deal official. No clubs came in for him over the summer and we've already used him in our Spurs rebuild. We need to allow though for a transition period. But let Zidane find his footing in the north of Italy. Let's see what he can come up with in his first int in charge. We've been doing the rounds in the transfer market, getting stuck in. We're in the trenches and this major sale leads the charge. We've just gotten rid of a bunch of players, cutting down on the wage bill, sifting through the dead wood and giving it that farewell greeting out the door. It's just a bunch of players that have overstayed their welcome and Zidane recognizes that as we have a plethora of players in the January transfer window, making the moves away. Like Mali Ake, the French 22-year-old left winger is now moving to Besitkas for 4.2 million. The young and exciting up-and-coming prospect Illing Jr. from Chelsea's Youth Academy is on a short-term six-month loan spell at Atalanta. I am manifesting that he grows and develops into an absolute king because we've got his face scan mod in game. Let's hope the English hype doesn't get to him and he can actually grow. As you saw there, the Brazilian who has been at Juve for so long now a long-standing club servant now moving to Spain. Raul Betis capturing for 16 million. The ex-FIFA 16, FIFA 17 wonder kid Daniele Rugani joins him in Spain. And Gianluca Frabotta is now departing to Greece with Panathiakos for 3.1 million. Cambiazo heads out on loan to RC Lenz for two years. Our last move agreed before January. The American now departs to the Yellow Submarine. Another player sold to Spain for 28.8 million pounds. And I'm sorry, we just can't have players here at the club that enjoy ranch on pizza. Ranch? Do you put the sauce on the pizza? <laughs> uh, <laughs> And another area I wanted to experiment in was the Aventus Youth Academy. What kind of talent are cooking up in the next-gen team? Who can we poach and promote to the senior squad? And it's Christian Rossi, the homegrown talent who's caught my fancy. We've been training him up, putting him on development plans, converting him from a centre mid to a right winger, and it's done him a world of good for his overall. 91 to 94 potential five-star weak foot. Just as the cherry on top, it's such a famous name in Italian football, so I'll take that any day. Of the week. And a player that has a lot of promise in real life, but in FIFA, he's just not all there yet. And our midfield competition is way too steep for him to even have a fighting chance. That is the hidden gem, Nicolussi Caviglia. He'll be departing now off to Turkey as Alanya Sport by his services for 2.7 million. That youth star that you just saw being promoted to the first team, yeah, his growth and development is just going to get stunted. He won't get much game time to improve his overall, so we're going to send him out on a two year loan spell. He's now packing his bags for the Netherlands as FC Utrecht get him. I know you're sick of seeing this animation by now, but, you know, the admin work, the behind-the-scenes graft had to be done. And it's one final player sale before the winter transfer market slams shut, and that's going to be the nearly 40-year-old Carlo Pinsolio. Our backup, backup, backup goalkeeper joins FB Stuttgart in Germany for 730k. Yeah, that's cute, man. 
Man United, I know you want Pog back, but if we sell any more players, I think the comments are going to come after me and I'll be cancelled. That's a no from me. And despite us making it rain, raking in the profits, I'm not going to allow us to buy any players until season two. We've got a little mini transfer embargo Zidane has to push through. Here is our first choice starting 11. The team for the future without Blahovic starting, we all know his departure is imminent. And finally, that strike duo, Weyer and Hoyland, gets a link in up top. So season one is a wrap. We're closing the curtains here as runners up. Like we push Milan to the final day in Zidane's first rodeo in charge in Serie A. 89 points. That's a W in my eyes. Back into European football. Back amongst the big boys with the kind of transfer window and the deals we pulled off. That is a major success. It's getting relegated. Yeah, it's my boys of Frosinone. Finishing rock bottom. I hope this doesn't happen in real life. I got my fingers crossed, but alongside Lecce and Hellas Verona, don't you worry. The hometown rebuild is coming soon. At least we had some piece of silverware to celebrate for as the old lady reigns victorious in the Coppa Italia in the Derby di Italia 2-1 in the final. That's the French icon's first taste of Italian glory as I was supposed to remove Juventus from the Champions League. It just didn't happen. So we got a few extra games in there for the players to get amongst it. They ended up defeating Borussia Dortmund, made it through the quarters, knocked out by Leverkusen and then made it all the way through to the semi-finals when we weren't even focusing on that. And they quietly had had a season to remember, only getting knocked out to the eventual champions, Atletico Madrid. Let's touch base and just see how the players are going. Who carried this team? Was it all Vlahovic? You guessed it, yeah. Vlahovic is definitely in our plans to sell next summer. The 24-year-old Serbian has been wanted. He's been touted by all the biggest European clubs. 26 goals and 3 assists for the hitman. As the only player to secure double figures in both goals and assists, 24 and 12 for him. And Timothy Weyer in his debut season in Italy. The American goal-getter with 18 goals and 3 assists alongside Erasmus Hoyland with 16. Kostic also flew under the radar. Another Serbian, 8 goals and 5. Pogba in the middle of the park, 5 goals and 5. Nicolo Rovella is proven to be one of our midfield marvels with 3 goals and 10. Two major puzzle pieces there. Him alongside Fadjoli in the middle of the park are absolute diamonds that we must keep at all costs. Ealing Jr. had quite a successful loan spell out at Atalanta. 2 goals and 1 assist for him. Chesney is still going strong at 34 as the Pogba Polish shot stopper got himself 14 clean sheets and our player out and loan who had the most successful time away from the club was in fact our homegrown talent. That's Christian Rossi now sees him as a plus 23 standing at 71 overall. Call me crazy but I'm more than tempted to call back a few of these lads for season 2. We've held back this season when it comes to player purchases and if that's a transitional season a Coppa Italia, a semi-final Champions League run is going to be scary to see this squad fully gelled with some superstar signings under Zidane's guidance. Bring on the second campaign because, boy, it is about to get spicy. The future looks bright. The future is now. And all that saved money has actually carried over and paid off $355 million in the bank to go crazy with. Obviously, we're not going to be spending the entire budget because that would just be crazy breaking every single financial fair play rule in the book. We've got a couple of real-life Juve transfer rumors that have emerged throughout the recording of this video and much much more so strap in in what feels like forever finally our first signing we get to put pen to paper and Zidane is wasting no time he's got a little bit of French connection with this one and it's also quite strategical from the bold man himself we're trying to weaken the current Scudetto holders AC Milan whilst also strengthening and focusing on our defensive department and that is by bringing in the center back slash right back and that is Pierre Colulu. he's posing in his brand new black and white colors for 30 33.9 million pounds. The fee was agreed and the Frenchman gets to link up with one of the all-time greats. We told you about this one. We gave you some warning. We tried preparing the fans for the worst and the day has arrived where Dusan Vlahovic will be making his big money move away from the club. Departing Italy for the first time in his career. Todd Bowley and Pochettino have splashed the cash. Chelsea paying upwards of 160.9 million pounds for the Serbian who is going to take up the mantle and score upwards of 28 goals this season because those were the kind of numbers that he was dishing up in season one and we actually benched him the entire time. Going from nine figures to seven figures, this was one of the last player sales we've had to do. He's been on the transfer list this entire time and that's Alessandro Di Pardo. He now moves off to Greece with Bonucci in his 40s about to retire. Danilo not getting any younger. We needed a brand new like just center back statement and how's this for a Zidane signing? We have pulled Lincha, Lizzie Sandro 
Martinez from Manchester United. With this kind of money, with this kind of club ambition, I think we could pull anyone on the market, to be honest. As the Argentine World Cup winner pulls up in his brand new black and white colours for £80.2 million, pounds, United and Ten Hag drove a hard bargain, but here he is. This one's more of a fantasy Karimo type signing. Like, I don't think this transfer is happening in real life anytime soon. He is staying at Old Trafford, but in his prime, we've been able to get him in 2024. And the short king is about to make that three-man back line a whole lot stronger. When you talk about transfer rules, Rumors and sagas, man. This one is probably going to last all summer. It's between mainly Inter and Milan to fight for the services of Davide Fratesi. But we've reached season two, and he is still at Sassuolo. None of the Milan clubs have gotten their act together. And you know Juve, they're always lingering in the background, ready to poach up Italy's next best talents, and that's exactly what they're doing here. They did it with Locatelli, and now it's time to bring Davide Fratesi to Torino for 40 million pounds on the dot. Juve are actually in the race for him in real life, but whether he ends up there is a different story. We've just gotten to that point where money doesn't mean anything anymore, and we can activate Nicolo Zaniolo's 63.2 million pound release clause. I admit it, we're probably spending too much for him, but he's a homegrown player, and it's quite a controversial one. He's played, he's come from Inter's youth academy actually, had injury upon injury, hasn't really had that career trajectory he and the rest of Italy were hoping for, and we're gonna rescue him from the Super League. He's chatting up and shooting his shot with his new teammates and our brand new number nine Zaniolo not only covers in that striker position for a centre forward but also can play out on the right which is pretty much exactly the type of player we need right now. Roma fans look away your boy is now dripped out in brand new Juve gear. Look not that I don't trust Chesney but you know Juventus supporters they're not his biggest fan. He's still got that starting goalkeeper spot on lock don't you worry but I just wanted a quality second choice backup and a potential air to the throne. One of my favourite signings to make on FIFA 23, Karimo, the Portuguese maniac. It's Diogo Costa from Porto. He arrives for £46 million exactly. He had probably one of the best Champions League final performances of all time for Middlesbrough in that Carrick rebuild. If you know, you know, so welcome to Juventus. Here's another potential transfer saga that could last all summer. He's an Italian that has been linked to multiple moves back to the homeland, and that is Gianluca Scamac. He actually started all right under David Moyes at West Ham and then a couple of injuries later and never really got that first team game time he deserved. So we're bringing him back to Serie A for 30 million pounds. We agreed the fee with the Hammers. It's just more strike power to add to our attacking force up front. We've just been on a shopping spree right now. So we've got to focus on our loan system and what young talents we want to ship out. We'll be sending Ilin Jr. back out those Juventus doors this time, rejoining Atalanta this time for a two year loan deal. It's just been loan spell after loan spell for the young Brazilian striker Caio George ever since he stepped foot at Juventus and we're continuing that trend virtually thanks to the arrival of Scamacca and Zaniolo in our front line. We have the license to send him out on a loan spell and the Gunners have expressed interest. Arsenal get him for a 12 month period. Another player that gets shown the exit door for at least two seasons and that is the Belgian De Winter. We've made our presence known with an abundance of quality defensive signings and he is just surplus to requirements, so he'll be out to Fenerbahce in Turkey. Just like how Arsenal wanted Kayo George, we have Dragusin, the Romanian, now off to fellow Serie A contenders for a 12-month deal. We've reached deadline day, and our transfer business is dwindling down to a close. And we've been sorted into quite a deadly group here. We've got Man City, Sporting Lisbon, and Celtic. Now, this is how Zidane's Bianconeri take the field here. We're lacking a bit on the right-hand side, which we only have Zaniolo there, but that's besides the point as Chesney's picked up a little minor injury that's going to have him out for a while. Martinez makes his centre back debut in the back three. We're starting to see the growth and development of these new talents. They're rising to the challenge and they're making their presence known here at Juve. Will the old lady be able to wreak havoc in multiple competitions with their new recruits and big money signings? Only time will tell as we still have £155 million in the bank which Zidane and the board are saving for season three. Closing the curtain on season Season 2 and push comes to shove the Scudetto was well and truly in our sights but a new champion is now on top and that's Inter reclaiming their title from a couple seasons back. Zidane's Juve finishing third so from runners up to third it could be worse, it could be better but when you're held at such a high standard at this club any season in the league without a title win is considered a failure as Empoli, Pisa and Parma all get relegated to Serie B.
be. It's not all doom and gloom though, as we did take home the Coppa Italia, the Super Coppa I should say. We ended up winning against last season's champions Milan on Perris 4-3 and in the Coppa Italia we just keep inflicting damage on the Rossoneri. It was a 2-1 win in the big dance in the Italian capital, so a domestic double, I'll take that. And in Group F of the Champions League, three teams fighting all on 10 points, but it was us and Man City to make it out. And in the round of 16, we got matched up against Manchester United, beating them 5-4 on aggregate in a thrilling encounter. And then in the quarters, up against Marseille, that saw us get eliminated earlier than we were expecting, and it was Chelsea to go ahead and win the entire thing against last season's champions, Atletico Madrid 2-1. Here is how the entire makeup of the squad is looking at the end of season two. Our top goal scorer this season was Rasmus Hoyland. The Dane with his razzle dazzle, he just only knows how to find the back of the net. 30 goals in all competitions. And him, alongside Zaniolo, filled the void of Vlahovic leaving. He is silencing the haters and proving the doubt is wrong as Frederick Church, our boy with 19 goals and 9. Gianluca Scamacca, talk about someone that only knows how to score goals. 16 goals in and off the bench as Timothy Weyer. Unfortunately, he didn't have the production we'd hoped, but the American with a plus 4 to his overall is now one of our best strikers up there with Hoyland. But Jolie had a productive season, 6 goals and 10 assists as he pulls the string from midfield. Locatelli calling the shots from CDM in his prime with 4 goals and 8. Even Fratesi in and off the bench found some space in that jam-packed midfield. It's the loan report. How did our players out on loan perform this season? And our biggest grower was of course that man himself. He's returning in season 3. The academy prospect Christian Rossi and someone who did just as well was Samuel Illing Jr. out of Atalanta. He now finds himself in the 80 category. Our main shot stopper. I didn't foresee this. Wojciech Szczesny growing even at 35 years of age and 89 overall. Let's face the facts. We're adding to our domestic trophy cabinet with Zidane in charge but the Serie A title the club haven't won since Ronaldo was here and the French legend an icon of the game is charged with the task of bringing some of the biggest titles back to Italy and this old historic club have a gargantuan modern day budget with 126 million pounds to spend we're gonna have to renew some player contracts work on a major money deal in attempt to improve this starting roster that is growing and developing by the day now it's no secret defense wins your titles some of the best teams of all time are known for their defensive units and that's why we gotta ring back the prodigal son Matthias De Litt will be returning back to Juventus the Dutch giant is gonna be back in black and white stripes and where he deserves to be where he belongs now with our aging captain Danilo deteriorating we need a world-class three-man defense and this guy is the solution to all our problems our most expensive transfer yet this purchase has absolutely broke the bank 110 million pounds with a player of his caliber and stature he is slotting straight into the first team no questions asked I wanted to tell yet another Serbian we have to walk out the doors and that is Filip Kostic the devious left winger who had some decent outings for us he'll be now departing to Fiorentina staying in Italy as La Viola pick him up for 25.5 million pounds it's Arsenal again they've come knocking Zidane and Arteta have that kind of relationship where we're shifting out one of our not unwanted talents I'll say but a player that's not in the first team jigsaw right now Filippo Ranocchia is off to Arsenal on a one year deal it's deadline day it's late August it's the summer transfer window you all know what that means our Champions League group gets revealed and it's a little bit nicer than last year over here in Group B joined in alongside Borussia Dortmund Real Sociedad and Dinamo Zagreb we want to at least make the semi-finals bare minimum as we've ended up with 42 million pounds left in the budget Delix just replaced Danilo in the back line Sule jumps in at right mid we're trusting the young Argentine to channel his inner Messi now we've got a new leader with the armband we've crafted a second team sheet just to showcase the kind of depth we have the second squadron they know what's up and they'll be ready when they're caught upon Zidane is as hungry than ever before we're currently halfway through the season in the depths of one of the tightest title races you'll ever see and in season one winter transfer window we sent two players out on loan Andrea Cambiaso and Cristiano Rossi on two year loan deals they've returned to our roster and especially Rossi he just feels like a brand new signing halfway through the season he has potential to be special he's already grown a plus three this season and he just instantly commands that right winger spot with dark green and light green attributes beaming all across the page I'm so glad I converted him into a right winger and saw that potential in him the prodigy is just an absolute game changer on the right hand flank and I wouldn't have it any other way it's taken
taken three years of a solid Zinedine Zidane project at Juve to reclaim the Italian title. The Bianconeri are Italian champions yet again. How many is that? What, 33, 34? I'm starting to lose count. The other competition just faded away into the distance like Milan, Inter and Roma cap off the top four. Lazio languishing in 10th and going down to Serie B. It's Bologna, Venezia and Cremonese. As it was another Super Cup victory and success beating out into 2-1. However, the icing was removed moved on our season three cake as we weren't able to capture the domestic treble which would have just been peak we would have been able to flex that all the way home but lost out to inter in the derby d'italia in the final 2-1 and it was liverpool to knock us out in the quarterfinals of the champions league back-to-back quarterfinal eliminations this time losing 6-4 on aggregate after a mini comeback we took down sporting lisbon 3-2 in the round of 16 and ended up topping the group with 11 points psg were the ultimate winners of the Holy Grail with a 1-0 win in the Mbappe derby. Reigning victorious in Serie A was a major task on our to-do list and we were able to check that off this season. Continentally is where we're really lacking. The old lady has been thirsting ever since the late 90s and here is how the team performed. This time we've got a bunch of top goal scorers. It was still Hoyland with his razzmatazz goal scoring skills, 26 goals and 2 assists. He has just continues to dominate that left hand flank and just look at this kid. We've unearthed the next generation talent. In only half a season mind you, Christian Rossi has produced 17 goals and 4 assists now at an 85 overall and he has proven his point with 21 goal contributions. This kid is just the tip of the iceberg. The best is yet to come. Timothy Weyer, our American gunman with 15 goals and 4 assists. Come out of left field, Nicolo Rovella with 12 goals and 10 assists. He can do it both. He's mastered both categories as Nicolo Zaniolo was a bit more of a super sub option in off the bench. Our boy number 44, Nick Beans with 4 goals and 10 we've got Pogba kind of being a senior veteran figure which is hard to believe three goals and two assists for the big Dutchman as Skamaka in off the bench with three goals Davide Fratesi proved useful Bremer got himself up to a 90 overall and in between the sticks Chesney managed to cough up 11 clean sheets and this is where you're starting to think okay Diogo Costa you might have to step up and be our first choice keeper our loan report all the players that were getting game time abroad we have Illing Jr it's gonna be a solid backup option for Chiesa once he's back both the lads out in North London had plus three campaigns. The bold god himself, Zizzle, will not stop until he seizes the Champions League crowned with Juventus. He wants to bring it home for the old lady for the first time in almost 30 years. 1996, it has been an excruciating wait. We've got to let the Frenchman cook up some snails and baguettes because who knows what's waiting for us come season four. The type of budget and the financial limitations we have for us this season, about 109 million pounds to spend. I don't know exactly exactly what kind of targets I'm looking for because it's come to that stage where, you know, the puzzle pieces are there. The jewels in the crown are about to form. Now it's time to let them shine as most of them are out on international duty for the 2026 World Cup. Let's see what kind of moves we can pull off in this surgical summer. I'm going to break it to you guys. We're approaching this transfer window with a completely different strategy, a different mindset. We're having those 1,000 IQ plays right now. I want this team to be sorted, not for the next five years, but for the next 10 years. We want to prepare for a decade of dominance and what Juve is so good at identifying the next big things the next large talents in Italy that are going to be big name players and adding them to their roster before it's too late and that's exactly what we've done here with the AC Milan Youth Academy product he's not actually in FIFA yet Francesco Camarda and now we've picked him up for 10 million pounds at 21 we don't really need him he's going to be like a fourth choice striker if we're actually really that desperate but expect to see the exciting prospect in future FIFA installments he's been scoring bucket loads of goals in the the Primavera and their youth teams. That's how he's made headlines all over Italy and Europe. And another player who has come from a pretty successful youth academy talent factory, that's Rayan Cherky from Olympic Lyon. I was starting to feel that lack of French quality that Zidane could bring to the team. Ever since Kalulu, we haven't really purchased any French players and Zidane is now standing next to the star boy of France right now for 59.8 million pounds. Let's be real, not going to be getting much game time. I mean, it's not really good for the first team. Heck, we don't even play with a camp in our formation so this one's just a flex signing here for decoration and he could also play on the left and right hand flanks also i get told frequently that he's my football doppelganger him or gvario let me know down in the comments below and when this kind of opportunity pops up on the market you just have to take full advantage he's fresh off winning the treble in real life barcelona have recently taken the plunge on ilkay gundogan the now veteran german midfielder he's got a winning mentality and taking home trophies is just in the guy's DNA. 
mate. It was my favorite Wonder Kid signing to make back on FIFA 13, FIFA 14. Ilkai, my guy, welcome on over to Juventus. We've got to do it for the old boys like Bonucci, who is actually hanging up the boots. He's retiring this season. Eight acceleration and 15 agility. Send him to the nursing home. And the former club captain, Danilo, who is also joining him in the retirement booth. The locker room is going to lose a lot of wisdom and guidance after this campaign. And here is the Champions League draw, what you've all been waiting for. And the old lady has been drawn into Group B alongside Villarreal, Wolfsburg, and Lech Poznan. We've got all eyes on that silver European trophy, and we're going to do whatever it takes. We're going to fight tooth and nail at all costs, and some of our signings from this season's market have ended up in our second backup squad, like Gundogan and Cherky. Meanwhile, the Italian stallion Rossi has just been a revolution to this first team starting 11. Bring it on, people. Bring it on, Europe, because Zidane's Juve are coming for it all. Get this right. We're four seasons deep, and we actually got a higher points tally than we did when we actually won the league. 90 points this year, finishing bridesmaids to Milan. It's been a back and forth battle between us and the Milan clubs, but here we are finishing second as they come through with 93 points. We still claim European football. We're still in the top four. It's weird to see Lazio down in 13th, but hey, my boys Frosinone has survived. I hope that's more of an accurate prediction to what happens in real life. Hellas, Verona, Empoli and Spezia all finishing the bottom three, relegated to Serie B. Here we go in the Super Cup again. I think this is a trophy where we have a 100% success rate in. 3-2, five goal thriller in a Derby d'Italia. And oh my God, we were so close again to a domestic treble. An Italian hat-trick was on the cards again. And we actually pipped out Milan in the final 2-1. Here is how our continental season went. Undefeated in the groups, finishing with 12 points. The Dan's men then made it out into the round of 16 where they absolutely demolished Sevilla. 7-2 on aggregate get finding their way through to the quarterfinals matched up against Real Madrid getting a 4-2 win revenge for 2017 and over in the semi-finals they did over Liverpool with a 3-1 aggregate away victory to secure a 4-2 win against the English which pairs them up against PSG in the game to end all games the big dance baby 2027 it's here let's touch base and just check in on what kind of monsters we're dealing with here we've future proofed the squad we've brought in the type of superstar big money recruits that Juventus crave and now we get to bear witness to the lads that got the job done this season. It's none other than Mr. Razzle Dazzle up front being our club top goal scorer. Our Danish headband hero up top with Timothy Weyer sparked a strike duo for the ages. 67 goals between the pair is absolutely devastating. Tim's had his up and downs but the American in his prime with 44 goal contributions and he's the only player to have double figures in both departments. Christian Rossi actually replicated his stats from the second half of last season, all in the space of his first full season at Juventus with 17 goals and 9. Federico Chiesa actually had a pretty uh, quiet year in terms of his standards, only 10 goals and 9 assists, but Davide Fratesi definitely stepped up in the middle of the park. Alongside Rovella, who is just an absolute box-to-box -box king, and who could forget Nicolo Fagioli with 18 assists, being the main playmaker in the squad, and our captain tonight, who's going to lead out the lads Manuel Locatelli with two goals and seven assists. Illing Jr. actually came off the bench. They had a handy few goal contributions there. Ilkay couldn't do one. They minus four. Bonucci down to a 60 overall, which is absolutely brutal. Our main shot stopper in between the sticks was, in fact, Diogo Costa, who took over Chesney's spot. And we have reached that upper echelon where we have three, no, four players valued in that nine-figure range. On top of the pile, he's the king, Rasmus Hoyland, with an 149 million pound market valuation. But Chiesa, Rossi from the Youth Academy, and Matthias De Litt are all in that realm. I forgot to even showcase to you guys what the philosophy of Zidane Ball actually is, as we're going to play with a drop back defensive style in that three man system, play attractive attack in football with fast build up and forward runs in tonight's final. We'll be repping our away kit just like PSG, who'll be donning the third kit. Here's how the old ladies scrub up in their first European final since 2015. The Parisians are looking dangerous in their own right, of course, with Mbappe, Joel Pedro in the line. Let's get this show on the road at Wembley Stadium. Can we do it? Under the famous Wembley Arch in London, it's about to go down. It's an old, cold, rainy night in the European summer. Yeah, of course, it's England, that type of weather. You gotta expect it. It's Zidane's first Champions League final since he did the three-peat with Real Madrid. And the Zebras of Turin are fighting for that European trophy to be black and white in the famous stripes. Are we gonna have a blockbuster showdown for the
the ages. Let's get this kicked off as it'll be PSG to get us underway. Joel Pedro gets us rolling. Come on, lads. Do it for Zizou. All of Italy, besides like Inter and Milan fans and maybe, you know, even Napoli fans aren't on your side tonight. And Joel Pedro nearly in the blink of an eye got PSG the lead. That would have been a horror start to this Champions League final. And Seawold went for the power shot. He holds it up nicely. Rossi being involved, which is what we want. The rainbow flick. And that could have been the goal of the century. But Donnarumma gets a strong hand to it. That's back inside. Seawold again. Through to Mbappe. And Mbappe's thinking about the shot. Diogo Costa says no and denies him of the opener. And we're still in with a chance here. Locatelli outside to Fajoli. And it's a perfect ball inside to Rossi. He's onside as well. The kid from the academy from Juventus next gen. <laughs> Jumps over the ad boards. He gets the Bianconeri, the opener. We break the deadlock in stunning fashion. The PSG defense turned to statues. It was a defense splitting pass from Fajoli to find him. The Italian link up and the homegrown connection was the play. It's a finish that Zinedine himself would revel at. He's the player for the people. He's the fan favorite. You all know where he's come from. His story, his come up, and he deserves all of this. Oh no, this is bad. Mbappe! PSG is still screwed scratching their heads, wondering how they haven't scored tonight. He's a BCHD favorite. He's got my seal of approval. Possession nicely for Jolly and loses it out to Fabian Ruiz. Uh, setting it up to nearly fumble in the bag here and Joao Pedro. Oh, it's all come from the man who set up our goal. Fajoli lost it out in a critical moment where you don't want to lose possession in that part of the field. It was a world-class touch from Joao Pedro. Yoga Costa overcommit. It was a simple tap in for the Brazilian. 1-1. They still have it. PSG here. Hakimi the 40. Chess King! And Kuchku has broken the net with how powerful that strike was. An absolute thunderbolt into to the top right hand corner as the center is crashing straight back down to earth. It's a reality check to end all reality checks and the power from that man's left boot was enough to implode a submarine. PSG take the lead in a matter of seconds hitting us with double trouble and Fabian Ruiz is nope. gonna pop one from distance and surely referee call it half time. I want to head into the sheds and knock some sense back into them because PSG they're hungry for their third. They're not giving up. Referee blow your whistle. Ref I'd, I'd like the whistle blown anytime soon. Finally, he calls it. We go into the sheds too. One down and a whole lot to work on. Finds Fajoli and he's in trouble again. Fajoli's getting ganged up on. It's just unfair at this point. Joel Pedro pops one from distance. How have we gotten to this point? Mbappe back inside to Joel Pedro. And it's that man again with the golden gloves to save us from another treacherous situation. Header away. Header away. <laughs> I'm lost for words. What's happening? What's going on? Is this real life? Am I yelling at pixels on a screen? It's calamitous. It's disastrous. It's just completely bonkers. What has unfolded before our eyes? We're in the trenches, people. This is dangerous territory. And we're staring down the barrel of a 3-1 loss in a final. Deflected again. PSG defending with everything they have as Rasmus Hoyland unleashes one. Hoyland inside. PSG just parking the bus at the moment. But Hoyland with a perfectly weighted ball. Through to Timothy Weyer, it's him, and one and only him, and somehow, it's panic stations, we need a goal, and we need it now, Weyer, on the deflection, Timothy Weyer, to get us a goal back, halves the deficit, we just need one more in 10 minutes, our American hitman, with his 34th goal of the season, and what better time to get it, and that outside of the foot shot, was absolutely cold, he is him people, and he gets the 11th goal in this competition, he's absolutely tearing it up in Europe, we are all guns blazing, we gotta go ultra attack, Attacking. We need to send this into extra time. Zaniolo on for Fajoli. We just got to go for it. And now Zaniolo back inside. It's Locatelli who wants to plug one. We need a Champions League miracle. Hoyland passes through Locatelli. Gets it on over to Zaniolo who's fresh. He cuts it back inside. He Bruh. squares it up to Timothy Weyer. And there will be no miracle Champions League final comeback for us. It was never on. We were filled with hope and copium, but it wasn't to be. Through the most dodgy of ways, they scrapped their way to a European title. I guess we got to go again next year, baby. Sometimes you really need these moments to just question 
ruin your life decisions. Our nightmare under the floodlights in the rain at Wembley. And season five, we gotta trust the process. Zidane really said to be continued. Season five, he's here for it. And it's like the ending of Across the Spider-Verse. I just want part two. You can't leave us on a cliffhanger like that, King. We can now confirm that the Bianconeri have clinched a domestic treble in this five season slog fest. That's right, Serie A, the Super Coppa, and the Coppa Italia. And have the golden opportunity to make it a quad. The quadruple is on the line, people. Two Champions League finals in a row. This time it's up against Manchester City in 2028. Revenge is a dish served best cold. And that's exactly what we did in the round of 16, knocking out PSG. The group stages, we actually finished second to Wolfsburg, who we eventually knocked out 5 4 on aggregate in the semis to make it through to the big dance. And here we are. Knowing my abilities and luck, I'm not going to go through and play this one. I'm going to leave it up to the AI and CPU. AI is taking over the world anyway, and I might as well let it take over the rebuild. It's an Oppenheimer versus Barbie type duel. It's a battle for the history book, so we can't let the citizens win the Champions League at Old Trafford. And all PSG did was delay the inevitable. We'll take those. Rossi, the homegrown boy, with a 10th minute winner. As Man City's Angel was sent to hell with a red card, we took full advantage. We weren't going to bottle that one this time. What do you think we were? Tottenham? After 32 years, Juventus are now European champions. Bringing back the Holy Grail to the Allianz Stadium. And just a, one final look at the squad. A farewell image. As you can see, Erasmus Hoyland was on demon mode this year. 35 goals, top goal scorer. And our only player to achieve double figures in both departments. 28 goals and 13 assists. All the absolutely sublime. I'm running out of words for this guy. Take a bow, my son. Ballon d'Or worthy performances are here. And it's exactly what you'd expect. They got robbed last year. They made sure to get the job done and undo all the wrongs of season four. If you made it this far, make sure to drop the like down below. Hit subscribe. Turn on the notifications for more manager-esque themed rebuild challenges on the channel. What other rebuild ideas and just player sims content do you want to see on the channel? We've got some fascinating videos in the works, people. So make sure to stay tuned. Follow me on all my socials. The links will be down in the description below. And as always, I've been Sir BCHD. That's been Zinedine Zidane at Juve. Have a great day. Take care. And I'll catch you all in the very next video.